Hello, hello, folks. Old Twit Talks Cars. Hope you're well. Hope you're keeping safe. Um, it's been a while. I wanted to bring you this walk round and shakedown video of the Citroen C6. I finally got it back from the garage. I've had the car, I think now 19 days, and I've actually done about, I don't know, 50 miles in it, 50 or 60 miles, because most of the time it's been in the garage, but more of that later and possibly in a, another video. So this one, in this video, really all I'm doing is I'm gonna walk you around this car, um, show you what you get for what your, in my case, £2,000, which is what the car cost me, and uh, just point out some bits and pieces around it so you can see literally as it's come off the, um, wasn't even the forecourt, but it's come out of a trade garage, so it's not been cleaned. It's exactly as it is when I bought it, and it's obviously then had mechanics crawling over it in that time. Uh, I'm gonna do that, walk you around it, show you some points on it, what's good, what's bad, and then I'm gonna take you out for a brief shakedown run, but nothing too in-depth because I've got other videos heading down the track on this car and I'm also still got a lot of work to do on it. So that will evolve as we go on. Um, but let's have a quick look-see at the car in general and see what you think. So folks, here's my two grand's worth of Citroen C6, 100,000 miles. 2.7 V6 diesel engine from Ford, stroke Jaguar, stroke Peugeot, stroke Citroen. Uh, so I've seen some action these uh, this engine. So this is the lineage model. So it's the middle one. It's not the base one and it's not the exclusive. So it's the one in the middle. So um, what I would say from my perspective, at least, she's a pretty old thing. I like her. a lot of people you know, I think she's Marmite, you either love it or hate it. Now, the only thing I've had done visually on this car at the moment, although it's been in the garage for quite a long time, having stuff done, are the wheels. I've had them refurbished because they were in pretty bad shape. So I'll put a picture up of those, but um, they've been nicely refurbed. Uh, and if you want to know who's done that for me, I'll put a link in the description, but they were done at home, but not been cleaned since. And the, the garage is obviously um, test driven this quite a bit, judging by how many, much diesel has gone. The other thing they've kindly done for me, I don't know if you can see there, they've left me some new scratches, which I didn't have before. Now I suspect that someone's belt buckle as they're leaning over into the engine bay. So thanks for that guys. Hopefully that'll polish out. Like I say, I've not touched this car in terms of cleaning or anything. So some of the things I want to get onto is get these headlights cleaned. That's got some, I think that's where someone's um, sort of lacquered them before to protect them. So they've cleaned them and then lacquered them. And that's the old lacquer because that just scrapes off. So hopefully I'll be able to do something with that as well. Mm -hmm. She's in pretty good shape. That headlight is quite opaque, so that's going to get done. Excuse the bird poo, like I say, she's genuinely in uh, off the lot condition, as it were. So yeah, I like the look of her. She's uh, she's a beaut, I think. Um, she'll look a lot happier and nicer when she's had a clean. Speaking of clean, oh, I'm doing about these. I mean, if anyone knows about them, I'm gonna have a go, but they're not looking too too happy. They sort of look like brushed and they're not meant to, I don't think. Uh, here's another little thing of note that's got to be changed at some point. These are laminated all round, so that's part of the joy is the car is really, really quiet. What happens to these, um, and I'll show you, I don't know if you saw that, but they drop and go up. I'll do it again. There you go. So they drop and then a couple of mil and then they uh, close again when you shut the door because they're um, frameless. So what happens here when the tree goes dead or it's disconnected and someone opens the door and then slams it, this is what can happen. Uh, so that needs dealing with. They're 200 and, I want to say 270 quid fitted, the laminated ones, and a toughened one is 150 quid, typically. Anyway, what I wanted to show you was this, because we're talking about cleaning, aren't we? So I can't wait to get my hands on that. Look at it, it's 
it's filthy. Absolutely filthy, but yeah, there's that 2.7 V6 HDI engine that's been used in many an iteration through its life. So we're going to give that a chivy up. Around the back. Um, active Aero. So this spoiler here, I can't show you that at the moment, but that comes up one level at 40, I think, and another level at 80. Now that I can confirm does work because when it gets to the higher one, you can see it through the through the rear screen. So that works. However, what doesn't work? The struts. I've just ordered two new ones, which I think were about 30 quid for the pair. Um, so it's all right till about there, but then, and that is amazingly heavy. I don't know why, it, probably because of all that spoiler government. But that's a heavy boot, that. It's actually quite deep. It's sort of shallow that way, but deep that way. That's broken and loose. So someone's reversed into that into something. So I've got another one of those. Uh, and I suspect that would be a nightmare to fit, but I'll have a go. I thought there was a little ding. Yeah, there is. There's a little ding just below the O on Citroen. I don't know if you can see that. That's about the only little ding I've found. There are a few scratches, but you'll see when I let go of this. Oh, you got your fingers in there. So, with the lineage trim, or with this one at least, it's half leather, um, which actually is growing on me, but these seats are super comfortable. I haven't got all the gubbins with the electric back seats because that's for the really posh folk. Um, I've just got the normal ones, but this is my knees behind the seat for me, so I'm six foot two ish. So, you know, it's not, you know, it's not amazingly good, but it's pretty good. Let me see if you can see my head. So, you know, it's not huge in here, to be fair, but it's plenty big enough. And it's very comfortable. I mean, the seats are comfortable. You've got aircon in here, you've got two uh, cigarette lighters. I mean, you can tell it's a French car, it's actually littered with ashtrays. So there's one in the door there. Well, obviously one in the other door. There's one in the front. There's one in the front passenger door. Uh, there's another one down here. I'm not sure if there's one here. I think there's something here. No, that's well, I suppose you could use that for an ashtray. That's really more of a cubby. But yeah, I've never seen so many ashtrays in a car in my life. Uh, so yeah, all good in here. I mean, the interior is pretty good. Once I get this leather cleaned, it'll be ace. The only thing is with these, these are great. But I don't know what to do with those. I'll have a play with those. Yeah, the other front one's quite scratched as well. Anyway. So yeah, it's all good interior really. Uh, front wise. Something annoying that I'm not sure I'm gonna deal with. I can't don't know if you can see from here. But the the steering wheel buttons worn off, basically. And I think they're gonna be a little bit of a difficulty to deal with. I mean, it's quite an old fashioned interior. And would I say it's super luxurious? Well, not by today's standards, but I tell you what, for a Citroen, I'd say it's extremely well built, very solid. It's not creaky at all inside. There's no creaks or rattles, 100,000 miles. I think it's been, you know, not particularly well looked after this car uh, and everything's solid. And boy, it's a comfortable car. I've not had it on the motorway yet, but it's going to be just an epic motorway car. Um, so you've got a CD player and what have you. Stereo is quite good. I think the up the exclusive model had an even better JBL, but this one's not too shabby. Uh, full electric on the driver's seat. Um, partial electric on the passenger seat, which seems odd, doesn't it? Because if you're going to bother putting switch blanks in, you might as well put the switches and the motors in. And you've only got one set of pieces to worry about but yeah very comfortable lumbar support and everything else no sat nav here but i don't care you know google maps for me is brilliant um i love it six speed box um 
double cubby there, so a big cubby which is air conditioned. So we put some malt loaf in there yesterday uh, and we did a bit of a 50 mile run and it was literally ice cold when we got it out because you can route the air conditioning routes through there. That comes up and down. So a bit of adjustment there. Got to get that sorted out at some point, but it's not really a priority for 270 quid. Uh, more of a priority is getting the cam belt changed, which needs doing, um, don't think it's ever been done. And it's 10 years old, this car now, so anything over eight should really have it done, even if it has not reached its mileage requirement. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna have a map done and I'm gonna have gearbox oil changed, even though it's a sealed for life unit, because I'm sure that that's a good idea and will help the, um, help the changes. So there you go, that's what you get for two grand. So I took this car on with a few glitches and problems uh, I've already spent a lot of money on it and I've got some more that I want to spend so that's going to be the subject of a separate video where I go open book on everything I spent on it uh, to get it to a state where I'm happy to use this car for the next year or so as my main sort of work car as it were so you can see What's what? What's interesting about this car is it's, it's, I don't know if you can hear it on the, uh, on the cameras, but it's a little bit rattly on tick over. So it certainly sounds like a taxi for old twit when it's ticking over. Um, but you'll hopefully see also when we get on the move that it's far from uh, diesel. And actually to me, it's just like driving a petrol car. Enough nonsense. Let's give it a go. So this is a um, six speed. So this is a six speed auto, which is quite nice. Um, and a lot of the time, but not all of the time, the changes are smooth and pleasant uh, and I think essentially having the gearbox oil changed because I think you know having done 100,000 miles as this car has then it probably is due for a change and I guess sealed for life in terms of the manufacturer's uh, view of the world meant probably 100,000 miles anyway maybe so I think that will improve the change. To be fair, this car, I mean, what you notice about it, what do you notice about it? Uh, creamy smoothness, I'd say, on the run. It's just creamy smooth. The ride really is great. I think what's, it's a sort of hard car to get your head around when you first drive it. It's sort of wafty and wallowy. I mean, it's a real wafty car. It doesn't feel wallowy exactly. It sort of pitches front to back a little bit, but it's a great and, and soft ride. But what's odd is when you actually get into some twisty bits, it's much better than you think it's gonna be. The body roll is well controlled. It doesn't roll a lot. Yeah, and it grips well. Um, there's a little video on YouTube, which is quite interesting if you're that way inclined, that tells you all about the suspension in this car. And it's quite advanced. It's the sort of phase three of the hydro pneumatic that um, Citroen did. And it, uh, it's a sort of active suspension. So in theory, it changes its pressures and what have you, dependent on road, conditions and driving style and what have you and it does feel like that I mean it feels super wafty like now when we're doing 25 miles an hour but then you know it stiffens up or seemingly stiffens up and provides a pretty decent um, for the size of the car provides a decent drive around the twisties. So anyway I'll give it a little bit of gas here It does make you smile. 
what I'd say is it's just sort of it, <laughs> is it fast? I don't really know. I mean, it sort of feels fast, but I think it's just the bulk of the of a car this size actually getting a bit of a wriggle on, which it does. I mean, it definitely picks up its skirts and, and heads for the horizon when you um, when you want it to. But it's sort of difficult to quantify how fast it is because it's so utterly, utterly refined. I mean, it is, I've had, a, I mean, these are recent cars as well. I've had a 2019 BMW 330i. I've had a 2016 uh, Audi A6 before that. Um, I've had two Skoda Superbs before that. I mean, all sort of decent, wafty type cars. And this is a league ahead, I'm telling you in terms of comfort and refinement and quietness. I mean, it just, it's deceptively, I think it's deceptive because again, in something like the Peugeot 306 Cabriolet that we've got, it's the other way around, you know, you're doing 60 miles an hour, it feels like you're doing 80, but well, in this, you know, you're doing 80, it feels like you're doing 60. And that's just down to the refinement and comfort of this car, so it's an amazing thing. I mean, if you get a chance to drive one, I really would recommend it to you because it's not really like anything else I've driven. What it does remind me of, actually, I... I yeah, a long time ago I drove a, um, and they were current then, so you'll, you'll, you'll tell how long ago it was. I drove a Rolls Royce Silver Shadow. And that was a bit like this, is just, you know, when the Rolls Royce used to go, well, oh, our power output is adequate, whatever it was. It's sort of like that, is you don't really need to know. You don't need a rev counter in this car. You don't really need to know its power output. It just sort of does its job in a really effective way. Uh, and actually I'm a bit, you know, I'm sort of cringing at the thought of putting it against the clock. Doesn't seem quite the right thing, but clearly people are going to be interested and I'm interested, to be honest, to see um, what sort of numbers it, it puts down, particularly before and after the map. So watch out for uh, more about this car coming your way really soon. Uh, as, you, as you've heard, I've got a list of things already booked in to do to it. The only thing so watch out for that. Subscribe and hit the bell and you'll get notifications of them as they come up. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed it.